let's discuss about pollination you know pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma so the very objective of the pollination is that eventually it will leads to fertilization so there are two types of pollinations one that is a self pollination what we call as a autogamy and second is a cross pollination what we call them allogamy now again the cross pollination can be divided into two part one the genogamy and second the xenogamy now in case of genogamy what happens that the flowers is going to be present on the same plant what i mean to say that male and female flowers are going to present on the same plant so technically speaking genetically it is not a cross pollination because the genes are belonging to the same parents right but uh, the moment we talk about xenogamy in case of xenogamy the flowers are going to present on two different plants that means male flowers is going to present in one plant and female flowers is going to present in another plant so naturally genetically it is a cross pollination eventually it is going to present a variation however in case of uh, uh, genogamy this is not going to create any variations right now let's discuss that uh, what are the possible uh, features which favors cross pollinations right so the very first things we will discuss about that is dicliny dicliny or unisexuality here what happens that the plants are either male or female right so the typical example is papaya okay so in case of papaya what happens we have a male plant separate and a female plant separate so naturally the only option left between them is a cross pollination because self pollination is just not possible as you can see in the diagram so this is a male papaya you can see there there is only male flowers for female plants you can see there the flowers along with the fruits you can see there so naturally dicliny is the best methods to ensure the cross pollinations okay the second is the dichogamy this is also one of the methods now in case of dichogamy what happens that uh, the maturity of the sex organs is going to happen at two different times right now since the maturity is going to happen at two different times so there are two possible one in which the male plant is going to develop first another in which the female plants is going to develop first when the male plants develop first we call them protandry right typically observed in case of lady's finger okay however when the female plants develop first we call them protogyny right and the magnolia is the typical example similarly there is a one more uh, substances that is going to favor the cross pollination and that is heterostyly now in case of heterostyly what happens that the flowers within a flowers the male and female parts are at different length so difference is going to exist in terms of length of the stamens as well as the style okay for instance you can see in this diagram here you can see there that uh, the male flowers are at the top of the flower and female parts at the bottom so naturally whatever the pollen grains that is going to be produced over here it is not going to pollinate the same female plant so only option left is the cross pollination now there is another variant in this variant you can see that the female part is absolutely outside of the flower and the male part is just inside so naturally again here the only possibility is the cross pollinations because the pollen grains from this particular part cannot go talk to this particular things so naturally the only option left is the cross pollination so primula vulgaris jasmine this is a typical example of heterostyle there is one more things that is hercogamy now in case of hercogamy what happens there is a presence of some natural and physical barrier between male and female sex organ that is androsium and gynosium typically it is present in case of calotropis now have a look at the diagram of the calotropis you can see there there is a structure called gynostagium now what is gynostagium here what happens that uh, the stigma is actually attached with the anther right and there is another structure what we call compound pollen grains right now this compound pollen grain is actually called as a pollinium now compound pollen grain is a typical feature of the family ascalpidaceae 
Besides Ascalpidaceae, there is a one more family that is Orchidaceae. In Orchidaceae also we see a compound pollen. So these are the two well-known uh, families in case of the angiospermic plant when we see a compound pollen grains. Now in compound pollen grains what happens? There is a tip top portion, this is what we call corpusculum. You can see there, this is the corpusculum. Now this is a part in which a leg of an insect get entangled. So when the legs get in, uh, entangled and when the insects actually leave the flower, they carry with themselves this entire compound pollen grain. And when the same flower reaches the another uh, female plants, so naturally in this way the pollination is going to be affected. There is a another there is a another uh, variant for ensuring the cross pollination, the self sterility. There are certain cases in which physiologically as well as out of genetical reason, the pollen failed to germinate on the same stigma. The typical example is petunia and mava, in which the pollen grains of the same flower fails to germinate on the stigma of the same plant. So naturally, they have to uh, another uh, flowers to ensure the pollinations. So these are the different types of uh, features which ensures the cross pollinations. Now let's discuss that what are the things these are available for the self pollination. Now in case of self pollination, the typical example is of China rose. Now in case of China rose, what happens? Now in case in case of China rose, what happens that the male and female parts of a flower is going to mature at the same time. So when they mature at the same time, we call them homogamy. China rose is a typical example of the homogamy. Since the male and female are maturing at the same time, so only option is the self pollinations. There is another variant what we call clestogamy. Now in case of clestogamy, what happens? The flowers never open. They always remain close. If the flower is close, it is very much obvious that the cross pollination is just not possible. So oxalis is one of the example for uh, clestogamy. There is another one what we call bird pollination. Uh, I'm sure all of you have read about the Mendel experiment. Mendel has done the experiment of genetics in uh, P and uh, actually in bird he removed the anther and uh, uh, th this particular process was actually called emasculation and eventually it actually leads to uh, the Mendel experiment. So I, I was just referring that particular point. So in case of bird pollination also what happens that P is a naturally self pollinated plant. Right. And in case of P, what happens that the pollination is going to have a self pollination. Okay. Now let's discuss that uh, what are the possible agents of pollinations? You know, we can divide the agents of pollination in two groups. One, the abiotic like uh, wind, air. The another one is abiotic like insects, animals, human. So these are the part of the abiotic agent. Now, if you see the male and female parts of a plant, they are specifically designed to suit the agents of the pollinations. Let's compare it, then we can understand that how we can distinguish on a very basic structures that how the abiotic agent is going to differ from the biotic agent. Within an abiotic agent, the very first is anemophily. Anemophily, that is the pollination is going to occur by the wind. The second is hydrophily. Now, in case of hydrophily, the pollination is going to be affected by water. Okay. In case of biotic agent, the typical is uh, uh, entomophily. These are the insects. Geophily, the pollination is going to occur by the animals. Uh, likewise, there are different names. I'm sure you are quite aware about that. That uh, malcophily, like uh, chiropetrophily, like uh, ophidophily. So, in case of ophidophily, the pollination is going to occur by snakes. In case of malcophily, the pollination is going to occur by snails. So on the basis of different animals, in different type of uh, pollination has been recognized. Okay. Now, if you compare in terms of the production of the pollens with the uh, abiotic and the abiotic agent, it is very much obvious that in order to ensure the pollination through abiotic agent, the number of pollen grains produced to be very large, right? But in case of biotic agent, what happens? that relatively lesser number is required because animal itself is going to visit one flower to another flower. So naturally large number of pollen grains are not at all required. But in case of uh, abiotic agent, what happens? A large number of pollen grains are required just to ensure the uh, chances of fertilization. Then it is very much obvious that pollen grains in case of abiotic agent is going to be light and non-sticky so that they can easily carry it out by the wind. But in case of biotic agent, it got to be sticky so that it can stick to its the insects and the insects will 
set again to the uh, flower and thereby effect the transfer so that's why the nature of pollen grains in terms of stickness is absolutely different depending upon the nature of the pollinators pollinators between abiotic and the biotic agent again talking about the number of ovules right in case of anemophilus flowers what happens that a single ovule in each ovary is sufficient or rather the single ovule together is uh, organized in the form of inflorescences we know very well in case of inflorescences what happens large number of flowers are going to remain together so naturally if, since the pollination is going to occur through the uh, abiotic as in and if the flower is going to present in the form of inflorescences the chances of pollination is much much more on the contrary in case of biotic agent what will happen that the flowers are going to have more than one ovule okay they have a multiple ovule right since why because they are not packed in the inflorescences again in case of wind pollinated uh, uh, flowers the 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 stigma must have a feathery so that they can easily entrap the pollen grains but uh, in case of uh, the biotic agent uh, pollinate, uh, pollination uh, that is not at all required so the stigma is absolutely normal in case of abiotic again the stem is got to be exposed one so that they can easily catch the pollen grains coming through the abiotic agent uh, whereas in case of uh, biotic agent stem is not exposed and uh, the last is that uh, the biotic agent flowers need to be colorful so that they can attract the insects right but uh, that particular requirement is not at all required in case of those flowers that is going to be pollinated through the abiotic agent okay so these are the basic difference between biotic and abiotic agent now let's discuss some of the unique pollination for instance when we talk about the pollination in case of totally submerged plants right then all plants adopt different mechanism and this mechanism entirely depends upon one specific plants here i have taken one example of valisneria you know valisneria is a completely submerged plant right so you can see in the diagram that you see this valisneria these are female parts so the female plant comes at the top and the male flower is released now these male flowers eventually release at the surface okay and then these male flowers goes to female and eventually affecting the pollinations so the thing is that the entire plant is totally submerged but only for the purpose of pollination they came at the surface of the river similarly as i told you different make a different set of mechanism is going to adopt it for pollinations some of them are quite interesting for instance if you talk about the insects pollinations then one of the typical one is a in salvia salvia is a leaver or a turnpipe mechanism now just see this is a stigma right and here is a anther okay and this is a sterile lobe so what happens when the insect sits on it then it act as a lever and it bends as you can see there it has bends over there the moment it has bends what happens that the stigma is touching the back of the insects so whatever the pollen grains that is present on the back of the insects that is taken care of so this is how the pollination is going to affect it in case of salvia there is another mechanism what we call calotropis we have just learned about this particular example in hercogamy because we have learned that in case of hercogamy there is a physical barrier between male and female sex organs uh, that was present in the form of compound pollen grains so here also we see there is a pollinia now this is a corpusculum we have already discussed that the legs of insects entangled on this corpusculum and when the legs escapes the flower what happens that the entire pollen grains are going to be escaped and when the insects reaches to the another one this is how they are going to transfer the pollen from one plant to another one affecting the pollinations now the next one is the piston mechanism that is a typical features that is going to occur in case of the family compositi you know compositi is known for syngenesis and epipetalous androsium where the uh, filaments are free and uh, uh, the entire stigmas are actually fused together okay so what happens that uh, when the insects touches the stigma okay so it pushes the pollen grains out of the anther tube which stick to the body of the insects right so this is actually called as a piston mechanism now in case of astrolochia there is a pitfall mechanism you can see there there is a hair like structure 
so what happens when the insect sits on it by default it keeps on going inside because the hairs doesn't allow the insects to escape so eventually it goes at the lower end and when it reaches the lower end it affects the pollinations so this is also known as fly trap mechanism that's all for pollination we don't have to discuss anything more hope that whatever we have learned in pollinations all of you must have find it interesting thank you